What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial, well, we're just going to be continuing on uh, from the last tutorial uh, where I uploaded a video how to create uh, a, a fun facade from a boring facade. Uh, it was just a kind of a little tip and trick uh, on how to improve the look and kind of make the facade more dynamic. Now, with that facade, we have a little issue that I would like to fix in today's tutorial. So that facade uh, has this uh, kind of warped uh, end uh, on the balcony or on the terrace, and that's going to give you a bit of an issue when you try to place railing there. So in today's tutorial, I thought it would be a good topic to show you how to create this a parametric warped railing in Revit. It's not as difficult at, as one might think, but it's also not that simple. So I thought it would deserve a dedicated tutorial on how to create exactly that type of a railing in Revit. So we're going to be tackling some uh, adaptive uh, families, uh, adaptive components, and also some in-place massing. Now, if you would like to learn more about uh, advanced uh, modeling in Revit and massing in Revit, uh, check out my course exactly on that topic. I take the extra time, the whole course is like eight hours long, where I show you pretty much everything there is to know about creating complex forms in Revit. It's available on my website, balkanarctic.com. The link is just below the video in the description, so check it out if you're interested. And also there on that website, I have numerous different courses. Uh, there is over 90 hours of content, and you can find pretty much for any topic, even if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced level, you can find something for yourself there. And also, if you'd like this project file that we're going to be creating in this tutorial, or any of my other Revit project files, you can find all of that on my Patreon page. That's going to be the second link in the description just below the video. So make sure to check it out if you're interested. Also, make sure to subscribe and like this video. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And now, without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So uh, for this, what we have to do is we have to find a creative solution for a problem where we have this railing that goes from this angle here. So it's a angle on this side to this angle on the other side. So it has to ha have some sort of a twist or something like that uh, for uh, for this uh, railing to follow. Now, we obviously cannot do this by using regular railing because if I go here, and just place regular railing and hit finish. This is what that looks like. So as you can see here, it's going to be poking out and then on this side, again, it does look weird as well. So we don't want that. Now, in order to create this, there are probably different ways to uh, achieving this result. Now, the, the most efficient one is, of course, by using the massing end site and then, of course, using an adaptive family for that. So I know it sounds maybe a bit complicated, but it's actually a ver very uh, easy parametric way of achieving this uh, effect. So let's then go here to the Massing Inside tab, uh, go to Show Mass and make sure to turn that on and then go into In Place Mass. Uh, now we can call this whatever we want, let's just call it our Warped Railing. There we go. Okay, uh, now we can get started. So what you want to do is, uh, because we already have these walls, it's going to make it really simple for us because we can use those walls as our host. So what you want to do is go here to set work plane, and then I'm going to set this to this wall. Then I can just go here to regular model lines and just make sure to check the draw on work plane. It's going to make it a bit easier for you. And then what I want to do is create a line here and let's actually start from the bottom here and go exactly 1000 millimeters up and then extend it horizontally. Now this is just going to be our marker just to know how high 1000 millimeters is because I want this railing to be at 1000 millimeters. Uh, next I'm just going to go here to this point and then just follow the natural angle of the wall, attach it there, uh, then I can perhaps uh, just to make sure that everything works use the trim and extend to corner, trim it here, uh, select this line and then move it to, towards the inside a little bit. Make sure here you snap to the bottom and there we go. So as you can see the length of this is 1068 millimeters but the actual height uh, over here is 1000 millimeters because that's up to where we went. Uh, so I'm just going to use the tab key to select this, hold the control key, add this to selection and then I can just get rid of those. Let's then uh, kind of spin around to the other side. Here, I'm just going to go here to set work plane, 
pick this face in this case, so this face of this wall, and then do the same thing. So you want one horizontal line here. Can we use the... Yeah, it's annoying that it doesn't give you a witness line down, so I guess we have to use that same approach as we did. So uh, 1000 millimeters like this, go out horizontally, and then just follow this line. Here we can just trim and extend. Use the tab key to select just this line and move it towards the inside just a little bit. Extend it here. Perfect. So, yeah, it looks exactly like the other one. Uh, use the tab key to select just this. Uh, hit delete, delete, and there we go. Okay, so now you just want to select both of these just like that. Go to create form and we have our railing shape. So we have the shape of our railing, but of course we don't really have any rails. You can add a glass material to this and you're done. You have a uh, warped glass railing. But in this uh, case for this project, we actually want a more uh, traditional looking railing with uh, vertical bars. And for that, what I'm going to do is select the surface. So you can just hover over it, uh, hit the tab key, you want us to select the entire surface and go to divide surface. Now when you go to divide surface, it's going to divide it horizontally and vertically and we only want to divide it uh, vertically. So you want to go here to the, I think it's the V grid and uh, for the layout just check none and there we go, now we have just a vertical uh, layout. Next, move up to the U grid, which is in this case the vertical grid. And then instead of the fixed number, let's go with the maximum spacing and let's go with, I don't know, something like uh, 150 millimeters, which is 15 centimeters. Yeah, that works. That's at least up to code in my country. There we go, works perfect. And then also what you want to do is to select this. Uh, go here to surface representation, uh, go to display properties and check nodes. Now that's going to add these little nodes which we can use in order to host additional geometry upon this. Now uh, when it comes to this additional geometry, we want to create an adaptive family that's going to adapt to this railing here. So for that, what you want to do is go here to the, uh, to the file tab, open that up, go to new, a new family and as we said this is an adaptive family so make sure to check the uh, metric generic model adaptive open that up perfect uh, next you want to go here and just add a couple of points on the surface select those two points we can actually move them a bit closer together this might be too wide there we go select two points uh, go here to make adaptive that's going to make them well adaptive points you want to select both of them again go to spline through points it's going to add a spline between them obviously <laughs> then let's go to uh, reference line there we go and then you just want to host one additional point here uh, somewhere anywhere on that line uh, now this point is going to be used to host the profile so let's go to set work plane set that work plane add to the circle tool and let's add a really small circle so for the diameter we can go as low as uh, 10 millimeters or something like that I think that will work. So you select the circle, hold the control key, select the line itself, go to create form, perfect. Uh, you can also assign material here, so you can select it and then go here to uh, material and then you can choose something like, I don't know, uh, let's see. Let's go with the brass material, that's going to look cool. Hit apply, okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to save this, so just go here to save and let's call this one the 20 millimeter railing. And let's actually save that on desktop. Uh, and let's call it adaptive. There we go, perfect. And I'm just going to save that and also load it into the project and close it up. Perfect. Okay, so once you're here inside of the project, hit the escape key a couple of times, there we go. Now you can go here to create, go to component, and then you can place that. So you want to go from the bottom point here to the upper point, just like that. Perfect. Uh, and then hit the escape key a couple of times, select this thing, and then you can go to uh, the array tool, which is in the massing environment called the repeat tool. And then you just want to click that and it's going to repeat that uh, all along this uh, form. So there we go. And then also let's go to create component, add one on top for the, the top rail. And perfect. 
as you can see, we pretty much have our railing done. It was as easy as that. So you just hit finish. Perfect. You can go to realistic. Or I think only if you go with ray trace that this is going to appear as brass or kind of gold-ish material. There we go. Looks really cool. Anyways, let's close that off. Uh, so, now you want to select this and of course we want to apply it to the rest of the building, uh, not only here. So you want to move to level 1, uh, go to the mirror tool, uh, use the pick access option, so MM is the shortcut, mirror it that like this, hold the control key, select both of them, again uh, mirror here, and once again let's mirror that. Oops. There. Perfect. Okay, so once we have that, let's move to the 3D view. So you want to select a few of these, uh, go to copy the clipboard here, uh, go to paste, align to selected levels, and then you want to align it to level 2. Hit OK, and it's going to do something like this. That's OK. Uh, move to level 1, or sorry, uh, let's move to level 2. There we go. And then you want to go to the move tool, click here, for example, and then move it all the way to the edge. And that's what we have. Next, select two of these, go to copy, copy from the center to the center of this wall. Perfect. And now if we go to the 3D view, there we go. Now we can select all of the railings. So just hold the control key, select all of these railing components that we have. And now we can just go to copy the clipboard, paste, align to selected levels. And you just want to move these to level three and five, click OK. Wait for a few moments, let's see what happens. Let Revit do its magic. So because we have so many elements, it's kind of difficult for Revit to do everything. There we go. And then we can just delete these ones on top. And there we go, perfect. It looks truly amazing. So as you can see, now we have railing on each floor and the railing follows the difficult shape that uh, uh, that the kind of the facade of this building gave us. But we managed to tackle that using this really, really cool railing. So there we go. That's how you create this parametric warped railing in Revit. So if you're interested in more uh, massing projects such as this one, uh, adaptive family projects, I actually have a couple of courses. I have a massing complete uh, kind of of advanced modeling in Revit course uh, where I show you how to use the massing environment and then also I have a course just on adaptive components in Revit which basically teaches you how to use uh, adaptive components such as these but uh, of course a lot uh, more complex uh, adaptive components just to make everything interesting and fun. But anyways there we go thank you for watching please subscribe make sure to like and share this video and I'll be back in a few days with another Balkan Arctic tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.